In this video, we're going to practice using hypotenuse leg and CPCTC in proofs. All right, determine if the two triangles are congruent. If they are not, state none. If they are congruent, then tell me how, using one of the five ways we've learned to prove triangle congruence and complete the triangle congruent statement. So in my first set of triangles, I can see that one of the triangles is a right triangle, and since they both share side BD, I know the, that the other triangle must be a right triangle as well. And then I can see that they have given us that the hypotenuse of each triangle is congruent. And I know that I can prove BD is congruent to itself, which is one of the legs. So since I have right triangles, I know the hypotenuses are congruent. I know one set of legs is con congruent. I know these triangles can be proved to be congruent using the hypotenuse leg theorem. So triangle ABD is congruent to triangle CBD. In my second set, I do not see, I mean, they really look like right triangles, but they haven't notated that, so I can't assume that they are. So what I have been given is that I have one side of one triangle is congruent to one side of another, and then I have one angle of a triangle has been congruent to another, and I know, just like the first one, that I can prove that BD is congruent to itself. That's the reflexive property. So I could prove that these two triangles are congruent using the side angle side theorem. So I would say that triangle ABD is congruent to triangle CBD. In my first set of triangles here, again, I don't know that they are right triangles, even though they really look like they are. And I have been given that a, sorry, back up here, uh, that AB is congruent to CB. And I know that I can prove that BD equals itself, but that's only two things. And in all of my other proofs, besides the hypotenuse leg, I have to have three things. So all I have here is two legs, so I cannot prove that these two triangles are congruent. Now, in my second set of triangles here, again, I have right triangles because of the marking. And notice that I've also been given that the hypotenuses, which is the side opposite the right angle, are also congruent. And then I know that BD equals itself because of the reflexive property, and that's a leg. So on this set of triangles, I could prove they're congruent using hypotenuse leg. So I know that triangle ABD is congruent to triangle CBD. In this first set of triangles, they are right triangles. So I'm looking at what else I've been given here. I know that BC equals EF. That's one of my legs. I know that B equals E because they're both right angles and right angle congruence says they equal each other. And I know that AB equals DE. So I don't have hypotenuse leg, but I do think I have side angle side. So I can prove these are triangle, these triangles are congruent by side angle side. So I know that triangle ABD is congruent to triangle DEF. Now, in my last set here, I again have two right triangles. And Notice that the sides opposite the right angles, which are my hypotenuses, are congruent. And I have one leg of each one, CE and CA, that are congruent. So I know these two triangles are congruent using hypotenuse leg. So I can say triangle ABC is congruent to triangle EDC. Now, let's try a formal proof. I've been given in this formal proof that triangle ABC and triangle DEF are right triangles, that AB equals DE and that CB equals FE. Well, so I've written down my givens, and 
let's mark up what I know here. Well, I know that the measure of line or side AB equals the measure of line DE. And I know that the measure of line CB equals the measure of line FE. So, wow, I've been given hypotenuse leg right here. But here's the rub on this one. Notice that my statements do not say congruent. It says that these segments are equal. And to prove to use these theorems, I must say that the segments are congruent. So I'm going to say that segment AB is congruent to segment DE and segment CB is congruent to segment FE. And I can do that because of the definition of congruent, which says that if two line segments have the same length, they are congruent. Now, as soon as I say those two segments, sets of segments are congruent, I can say that those two triangles are congruent using hypotenuse leg. Notice the only reason I can use hypotenuse leg is because Statement number one says they are right triangles. You must state that in any theorem where you are using hypotenuse leg. All right, in this proof, it says that line AE is parallel to line CD and that AB is congruent to CB. So, what they're asking me to prove is that B is the midpoint of line segment ED. Well, I don't know if you remember, but back uh, in our last video, we talked about how we could use CPCTC to prove things like midpoint and segment bisectors and things like that. So I'm going to kind of work backwards on this proof. If I want to prove that B is the midpoint of ED, I'm going to put that as my very last statement, and I'm going to put a big red dot where B is because that tells me I need that to be a midpoint. All right, well, to be a midpoint, that means that really what they want me to prove here is that EB, the length of EB, is congruent to the length of DB because that is what midpoint means. It cuts a segment into two congruent pieces. So if I can prove that those two segments equal each other, I can say that B is the midpoint because of the definition of the midpoint. Looking at these triangles, they really haven't given me much information, though. So I don't think I can prove uh, that those two segments are equal. But here's what I think I can prove. I think I can prove those two triangles are congruent. And if I can prove those two triangles are congruent, I can say those two segments are congruent because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent and EB and DB would be corresponding parts. So that's what I really need to prove is that these two triangles are congruent. Well, I have been given that these two sides, AE and CD, are parallel. Well, if they're parallel, then I know all of those angles, alternate exterior, alternate interior, corresponding are congruent, and that same side interior are supplementary. So, I could prove that A, angle A equals angle C because they are alternate interior angles. Now, if you cannot see this, draw this out. Draw your two lines, AE and DC, and transversal AC through them. And you can see that angle A and angle C are alternate interior angles. And since the lines are parallel, they must be congruent. I could also do the same thing for angle E and angle D and prove that they're congruent because they are alternate interior angles. And then I've also been given that line segment AB is congruent to line segment CB. So I can prove a lot more things, but right now I can stop because I already have angle, angle, side. I have two angles and a non-included side. So I'm going to write those down, that angle A equals angle C because they are alternate interior angles, and angle E equals angle D because they are alternate interior angles. Notice that I have one, two angles, and a non-included side, 
So I can say that triangle ABE is congruent to triangle CBD because of angle angle side. And as soon as I say that, I can say that segment EB is congruent to segment DB because of CPCTC. And as soon as I say those two segments are congruent, I can say B is the midpoint because definition of a midpoint. All right, I think you have enough to start your homework in this section.